as individuals, we can now have intimacy with God. And of course, that then means that we need to ask the question, how now should we live? For if you were to think about how you live day by day in a fallen world, have you ever thought that this body that God has given you, which is where the Spirit of God dwells, is precious? And that when you sin, you are affecting this temple of God. And we need to then see sinning in a different light. In Corinthians 6 and verse 18, it there speaks about individual Christians in Corinth who were defiling the temple by sexual sin. They were having sex outside of heterosexual marriage. And some of the Corinthians were engaged in sexual immorality. And Paul asks, are you crazy? You're the temple of God. How can you do that? How can you possibly think of doing anything like this? Don't you know that God lives in you? He tabernacles in you. He resides within you by his spirit. And so these questions don't only have to be limited to sexual sin. They apply to all sin. And God is not just out there far away. God is not just somewhere looking down at you, trying to check on you whether you're being good. No, God has chosen to take up residence in you. And now that means that there are some things that should be unthinkable for you to do. For instance, in a local church, it would be unthinkable to put a condom machine next to the pulpit. How much more for you and me to do things that offend God within us? We are to have things that are unthinkable. Sin that we turn from because we know that God is always with us, in us, by His Spirit. And so if God is with us, what can we say in conclusion? Well, that means that any sin is repulsive to God. And just like the construction of the tabernacle, God repeatedly says to Moses, follow these instructions precisely. Do what I've shown you, even as I've shown it to you from heaven itself. So you are to be careful in your life to do things precisely as God has taught us. Remember, Jesus said we are to disciple new believers and to teach them to obey all things that Jesus has taught us. And so we must know that we must have no toleration for sin in our own lives. And we need to realize that God dwells in us and we must not introduce anything into this holy dwelling of God that would be unthinkable to God. Now, many Christians agree that all sins are equal, but in reality, most Christians have a hierarchy of sin. We'll say, for instance, well, uh, it's okay to lie to a stranger, but never lie to your family. Or we'll say, it's okay to cheat, uh, you know, on your taxes to the government, but don't cheat on your spouse. You know, that's a bigger sin. But the reality is all sin defiles the temple of God. And as Jesus cleaned out the temple in his day, Jesus comes to you and to me and says, get rid of materialism and all that will defile you and make your life your body, your soul, your mind, a place that is set apart for him, that is holy, that the Holy Spirit might dwell comfortably in you without offense or grieving him. And so we need to be careful in every area of our lives. We mustn't say, well, photostating with the boss's photostat machine is a small sin and robbing our neighbor is a big sin. No, all sin is sin. And we are to turn from it entirely. And so the point is that we are God's temple. And that everything has its place and order in our lives. 
throughout Exodus, God keeps reminding Moses to follow the divine pattern exactly, without the slightest deviation. And that means that you and I need to follow what Jesus has taught us. We need to obey him. And we mustn't become paranoid about it. We know that perfection is impossible. But we need to know as well that when we sin unconsciously, even in an average day, perhaps many times, there is the blood of Christ who atones continually for us. But when you think, should I or shouldn't I? Uh, or I know I shouldn't. Oh God, help me. Well then, stop and say, I won't do this. I am filled with God's Spirit. He dwells within me. He will give me the power to turn from this temptation. He will give me a way out under it that I might be free. For the Spirit of God lives in me and the Spirit of God can empower me to live a new life. Because the Spirit of God lives in your body, that means that your physical body is worthy of honor. We mustn't see it in a way that is negative. For instance, your body and its desires are not to control you. That's an extreme where you idolize your body and you do all the exercises and you pump yourself up and you live for pleasure. That's hedonism. We are not to give in to every urge. You mustn't just do what the advertisers say. Just do it. You are to honor God with your body. He dwells within you. But there's another extreme is to think that your body can lead you to spiritual experience, that you can find God, that you can get in touch with your inner self, that you can find spiritual tranquility in your body. No, that is another negative extreme. Transcendental meditation or super spiritual living is not the key. Jesus lives in you by his Holy Spirit. Your body is precious. He had a body like yours and has a body like yours. And we as Christians are God's temple. And so we can resist either of these two extremes. Though your body is worthy of divine indwelling, it does not make your flesh and blood the center of the universe. God is the center of the universe. Hold your personal longings and urgings in check. Be self-controlled. But in the same sense, it reminds us that your bodies are good and that you don't have to deny your body and think nothing of it. And God created you and said you were good when he made you very good in actual fact. And so the totality of your, your humanity is God's design. Sin has broken and damaged that. But it is the whole person that God declares as very good in Genesis 1.31. We are not to shun our bodies, nor are we to worship our bodies. The fact that God somehow miraculously dwells within your body is above our comprehension now, but that is true. And it shows that your physical body is not to be elevated to inappropriate levels, but you are to have an appropriate view of your body. In other words, your body image must come from God. It doesn't come from your mirror or from the advertisements. Yes, exercise and look after your body. Don't put chemicals into your body that will damage the temple of the spirit, whether it's nicotine or drugs or alcohol that will uh, control you in some way. You are free in Christ to be filled with joy and peace and kindness and self-control, all the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And so run to Jesus every time you are tempted. Find in him the power to live a new life.